Good evening and good to have you with us in the 8 p.m. edition of the Urban Debate. Tonight we have three big stories lined up for you. First up, we put the spotlight again on the debate around the Kavar Yatra, which is set to take place with lakhs and crores of people who and pilgrims, devotees who will join in. Now the host state, Uttarakhand, which is where everybody really reaches and returns from, that state has cancelled this, but Uttar Pradesh state ha hasn't and that's going to be a first debate. The second big story will be the Punjab Congress leadership crisis and the various compromise formulae being worked upon and what's going on within all of the caps from Captain Amrinder to Navjot Sidhu and within the Gandhi family. At 9pm, we are back with our relentless Friday evening conversations on mental health issues regarding mental health. Tonight, we talk about how in the light of the pandemic, the sale of drugs for mental health conditions have gone up. A clear sign that there are now more people seeing these issues crop up. First up, the issue of covered Yatra. Now, after Uttarakhand government cancelled this, Uttar Pradesh government came out and said they're still going to continue holding the Yatra. The Supreme Court then stepped in, took sumo motor cognizance of it and issued notices to center to the Uttar Pradesh government. Now, while the center said, well, the onus is on individual states and states who feel that it's not okay for them to hold such a big crowded event can go ahead and cancel it as they have. Others who feel that they are in a situation where they can, the decision is left to them. But the Supreme Court isn't really convinced with this and has now in different ways today verbally told the UP government that they need to reconsider their decision. The Supreme Court has told them to reconsider it or they will pass the order, which the Supreme Court will on Monday any which ways. The Uttar Pradesh government even tried to convince the Supreme Court that we, we are largely holding the Yatra symbolically. There won't be too many people. We'll have, you know, checks and balances in place. But none of this so far has the Supreme Court very convinced because they believe that the health of citizens and their right to life are paramount that all other sentiments, albeit religious, are subservient to this most basic fundam fundamental right. And with this, they said either we pass uh, orders right now directly or give you one more opportunity to reconsider. We have done this, taken sumo moto cognizance here because Article 21 applies to all of us and it is part of our constitution to safeguard all of us. So. What is the Uttar Pradesh government going to do? That is the big question. Let's say good evening to the panelists who are joining me right now. Raman Malik of the BJP, Ram Pratap Singh of the Samajwadi Party, Sudhir Mishra, resident editor of NBT, uh, the Navbara Times in Lucknow, and uh, Arvind Kumar Jain, former DGP of Uttar Pradesh. I actually want to start off with some of the uh, ways in which Uttar Pradesh government is trying to, uh, you know, convince everybody that this, we will do it in a safe manner with all the checks and balances. So, they have actually gone ahead and said that we've told that the covered sungs will not really organize large movements during the pandemic. We've also said that everybody who's going to be a participant needs to get their permission done via these sungs. Pilgrims uh, either have to have an uh, RT-PCR test report or have to be fully vaccinated uh, and so on and so forth. But is this really going to help, Mr. Sudhir Mishra? Uh, every year, I mean, apart from last year, we've seen the kind of crowds that do become part of this uh, yatra. Will having these policies make sense on ground? I think that the Raja Sarkar is understanding this thing in a good way. क्योंकि जहां तक बात है कि प्रतिकात्मक कराने की या वैक्सीनेटेड करा के लोगों को लाने की वैक्सीन्स है नहीं और शहर बड़े-बड़े शहरों में लखनऊ में और दूसरे भी आसपास के शहरों में रोज ये खबरें आ रही कि वैक्सीन नहीं लोगों को लग पा रही है उसके मुझे लगता है कुल मिलाकर जो कावड़ यात्रा को लेकर जो इतनी बहस हो रही है उसके पीछे खाली उसका एक राजनीतिक फायदा उठाने की बात है पिछले से पिछली बार जब कोविड से पहले की एक कावड़ यात्रा थी उसमें हेलीकॉप्टर से जो अभी मौजूदा एडीजी हैं उन्होंने फूल बरसाए थे तो वो एक वो एक प्रतीकात्मक जो अपनी राजनीति है भारतीय जनता पार्टी की उसको फायदा पहुंचाने वाली चीजें हैं इसलिए इसके ऊपर इतनी बहस हो रही है वरना जगन्नाथ यात्रा रुक चुकी है 
पूरे कोविड के दौरान सारे मंदिर बंद रह चुके हैं सारी जितने भी और भी धार्मिक आयोजन थे उनको रोका गया था इसी सरकार ने रोका था प्रशासन ने रोका था तो कांवड़ यात्रा को लेकर इतना हंगामा क्यों है ये समझ में मतलब क्यों उसको लेकर इतना ज्यादा सरकार परस्यू कर रही है वो बस उसमें एक ही बात समझ में आती है कि इसका राजनीतिक निहितार्थ है इसकी ये सारी बातें हो रही है वरना जब जिस तरह से थर्ड वेव की बात हो रही है और दुनिया के दूसरे देशों में ब्रिटेन में रूस में इंडोनेशिया मलेशिया जहां से खबरें आ रही हैं कि कितनी तेजी से फिर दोबारा संक्रमण फैल रहा है ऐसे में तो ये एकदम आत्मघाती कदम होगा कि हम फिर से इस तरह के भीड़ और जमावड़े को मौका दें कि जि, जिस तरह से कुंभ के दौरान हुआ उत्तराखंड में उत्तराखंड सरकार ने इस बार सजगता बरती है सावधानी बरती है और उन्होंने उसको रोका है जिसके लिए उनकी सराहना होनी चाहिए और मुझे लगता है देर सवेर राज्य सरकार उत्तर प्रदेश की राज्य सरकार भी मुख्यमंत्री योगी भी कई बार कह चुके हैं कि वायरस किसी को पहचानता नहीं है तो ये यहाँ के गृह विभाग को और दूसरे जो भी लोग जिम्मेदार लोग फैसला ले रहे हैं उनको ये बात समझनी होगी कि लोगों के जीने का अधिकार सबसे महत्वपूर्ण है और जो धार्मिक आयोजन है वो आस्था का विषय है जरूर लोगों की अपनी अपनी आस्था है लेकिन जब आपातकाल हो जब इमरजेंसी हो तो फिर सबके जिसमें सबका हित हो उसे माना जाना चाहिए so so let me ask this question to raman malik raman malik then why the insistence is it simply uh, looking at some political points to be scored ahead of elections why are we insisting on doing this right now rikit uh, tanvi i would uh, like to say a few things one whatever the honorable supreme court says it has to be taken seriously yes but at the same time there are couple of things which i would like to put forward the honorable supreme court can suo moto take up this case very good but there's a, a petition filed in front of the supreme court for making sure that this whole farmer agitation should be removed because this is also a big booster for the covid spread and other things for which there has been no action from the supreme court nor has the supreme court uh persuaded that particular call the other thing which i have to say is that suo moto supreme court could have spoken upon the videos which came out of masuri kamte fall or manali or shimla or other such places which the honorable supreme court has not yet even bothered to think and talk about now if i go forward to this we would not forget the ramzan uh, uh, execution of the uh, the fun and folic of the uh, ramzan period in hyderabad and the videos were and photographs were given there was no problem with that now lockdown restrictions in keral are being uh, changed for the 18th 19th and 20th of july you know it for what now is it necessary for buying jewelry is electronics fancy shops footwear textiles i don't think it is something which is of necessity now the whole point of the government to relax the lockdown was primarily so that the economic activities which are of necessity should start off and the economy should come back whatever the uh, things which are required by the people this supply chain must be there yes but was this lockdown relaxation for fun and folic no and i think all of you would accept that that this was not at all for any fun and folic why is it that suo moto these kind of things do not get picked up why whether is it? it is the case i am not understanding what are you trying to ask of about the supreme court's intent so the point is very clear i i believe your your sister channel your sister channel uh, the time now is getting some interview with mr uh, the ex cji of india rajin gogoi about uh, the 124a and where he says that there are already three judgments which have already mr raman the, malik this is not know, a debate about the sedition law no, that no, was please, yesterday please, please listen i am asking you a very me. simple question what, what is it that you are trying to say by giving examples of where the supreme court did intervene or did not intervene but if you don't have an answer no. for it let me just make no, no, you, one thing very clear it, ah, so why can we 5 seconds as a simple answer why that the honorable supreme court is 
not a party to anybody it is for upholding the uh, the uh, law and order yeah. or the uh, prescribed uh, format of law and it should be equal for all okay. it should not be that at times it wakes up and at times it does not so if it wakes up it should be awake all the time so uh, mr raman malik uh, mr firstly i would urge you to think twice before you make such commentary about the topmost judiciary institution in our country i am not making a commentary I you have by is... by large no, made no, a commentary about how the if they need to intervene the they need to do it in all the cases the i heard you i heard you out now yeah. listen to me please don't yell on my As show please my don't right. yell mr raman malik don't get agitated now let me no, explain to you agitated. as far as the farmers protest is concerned multiple courts from high court including high courts have told repeatedly the governments that it is their responsibility and their decision basis law and order or even the pandemic this is multiple There's times been told to the courts one minute uh, now you said what you had to allow me to finish because the supreme court isn't here to defend what you are right now saying where they wake up in your words or they don't wake up secondly as far as the tourism hotspots are concerned the supreme court did not need to because the government did because everywhere from uttarakhand government to maharashtra government and the central government after it became a big story and those visuals came out including the prime minister of this country have spoken about it and action from top to bottom has already started this here lies a distinction mr raman malik in this case the prime minister has spoken about it put out warnings about how we need to avoid large scale gatherings in this case the uttarakhand government has uh, taken cognizance of that looked at their own situation and decided not to but in this case we are not seeing that in uttar pradesh ram pratap singh why is it is it because uttar pradesh is out of the pandemic there is absolutely no worry any more left in your state about pandemic i know uttar pradesh is on top of the list of vaccination table but are all your worries gone ram pratap singh thank you uh, it's not just the supreme court we the citizens of uttar pradesh are equally perplexed the up government to allow kavariya yatras in whatever format they might talk about to answer your question let me get into who are the kavariyas what is the profile of the kavariyas so to answer that question these are young boys and young men between the age group of 16 to 25 to 30 mainly from your rural parts of up who go on these kavariya yatras this segment of our population is possibly not even 1% vaccinated uh they do not have the awareness uh, or related to how corona spreads and they will be from across the state so i don't know how the state government has given an assurance that they will be able to manage the movement of such a large mass of young people across the state so it's it seems like a very very politically motivated in view of the coming elections i think we are trying to reach out to a certain segment of the population that's my take on it thank you okay yes Sunday, mr malik you can respond the state government very clear in saying mm. that it would be as per the covid protocol and whatever the safeguards are required would be followed and it would be symbolic in nature then how come mr ram pratap singh knows how how and whatever is going to happen if he's become a fortune teller i am i have no words for it may i come in yes 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 uh, i don't need to be a fortune teller to tell you what's going to happen we have just seen it about 6 weeks back exactly same assurances given by the government to the high court regarding the up panchayat elections same kind of covid protocols were to be followed we all saw how those covid protocols were broken and not followed and then we have been through this traumatic time where we have seen thousands of deaths across the rural hinterland of up so and the bodies on the ganges so don't tell me that we i have to well, be a fortune teller the bodies on the ganges is another issue 
which can be debated okay. for what so let me let me okay so we are talking now raman uh, malik you raised the issue of what it is that the up government is insisting that they will do uh, as precautions let me take that point across to mr arvind kumar jain at the end of the day uh, the, it is the state machinery the local administration mr jain in every district every taluka and the police who will have to ensure that this is followed so in that to say that either where there are checks about being fully vaccinated or an rt pcr report that you need to take permissions that uh, you know we are going to keep the numbers in check basis only those people who really want to go because of their religious sentiment i mean i thought the whole idea of anybody who wants to participate in it is because they believe it and it's their religious belief are some of these measures that up government is talking about uh practical and can can they ensure that norms are not broken no they are not practical at all they are not practical at all and it is impossible to ensure them on every road going towards uttarakhand uh kavadiyas go to hardwar they go to gangotri go to other places in 2019 it is estimated that uh, 3.5 crore people Uh, participated in uh, Chardham Yatra and Kam Kamadiya Yatra. So, uh, we all know that Kum was a super spreader of uh, Corona, and uh, this event should not be allowed at all. Uh, uh, as far as my knowledge goes, police will be very happy if uh, if uh, if it is prohibited, if, if it is uh, prohibited uh, strictly throughout throughout UP because Kamadiyas come from Haryana also. They come in large numbers from Delhi also. uh they move in congregations uh lunches and dinners are organized by the local people for them and uh, they uh, canopies are put up and they uh, sleep there so it it will prove to be a super spreader and uh, uh, police cannot enforce police cannot enforce all these all these uh, directions from the state government um, uh, as far as uh, uh, practical practical aspect goes Yes, and that that uh, uh, actually is the other problem, Mr. Mishra. Uh, the practical aspect of what is being said. Now, I know there has been a lot of commentary about how you know well Uttar Pradesh handled the second wave and the pandemic and how they seem to have come out of it. Uh, uh, but on ground, is it really right now possible to take this risk in the smallest of the villages and districts? Is there manpower to ensure these rules? बिल्कुल इसकी इस तरह की कोई पूरे उत्तर प्रदेश बहुत बड़ा है इसकी आबादी बहुत बड़ी है और अगर यहाँ पर इस तरह की यात्राएं अगर सब, सब जगहों से निकलती हैं तो उसको संभाल पाना अगर पूरा पारंपरिक ढंग से निकलती है तो बड़ा मुश्किल होगा पर मुझे लग रहा है कि राज्य सरकार इस बात को पूरी अच्छी तरीके से समझती है उनकी जो कांवड़ संगठन है उनके साथ बातचीत शुरू हो गई है उनकी मान मानव चल रही है कि वो लोग ना आए और उनको समझा बुझा के मुझे लगता है कि गवर्नमेंट सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के रुख को भी समझ रही है और सुप्रीम कोर्ट की गाइड सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने जो कहा है उसे भी समझ रही है और uh, मुझे तो पूरी उम्मीद है कि uh, ये यात्रा उस तरह से नहीं निकलेगी जैसे कि uh, अभी तैयारी चल रही थी यात्रा को रोका जाएगा क्योंकि राज्य सरकार दूध का जले है मट्ठा फूक फूक के पीना पड़ेगा क्योंकि पंचायत चुनाव में जो देखा और जो कुंभ में हुआ उसके बाद अगर इसके बाद ये यात्रा निकलती है और उसके परिणाम स्वरूप फिर से थर्ड वेव आती है तो बहुत समस्या होगी पॉलिटिकली भी बहुत समस्या होगी पब्लिक का जो आक्रोश होगा वो भी बहुत होगा रमन मलिक सी माय पॉइंट इज लिमिटेड तनवी टू दिस इफ इफ अट ऑल now whatever the supreme court says that's a different issue and that has to be looked into and then commented upon but if at all the entire activity becomes symbolic in nature when we say symbolic in nature it becomes not as a routine affair as a millimanistic or maybe micro millimanistic kind of an affair where probably one or two person go and bring it and do do the needful if something of those core sorts are done i believe it will be manageable by the administration and things like that and that is up to the state government and the honorable supreme court to assess what they think but my submission that i was doing earlier also and i am saying and i'm very uh, responsibly saying this that 
the virus does not see a religion the virus does not see a state a caste creed anything it will just spread so everybody who has the luxury let's say like the thing which is now going to happen in kerala on 18th 19th and 20th where the state government has given relaxation and the way it happened in hyderabad the way it happened in maharashtra the way it happened in other places my whole point is why is it that those events become a no tuomoto action uh, precedent the virus is not going to ask me or you or anybody what is your religion what is where do you stay whether you want to follow something or you don't it will just come and infect and then it will take its toll so my point is that it should be uniform in nature and there should be no discussion upon it but then if you do not have it as a uniform precedent then there is going to be discussion and the discussion is going to lead into various other combinations and permutations so let that me, is my summation let me just uh, also point out that this symbolic option that you are talking about a symbolic yatra which uh, may or may not actually uh, work out the way it is being described and envisioned to say only a few people go because then it's not really a yatra for all uh, where the last estimate for 2019 indicated 3 crore people over 3 crore people participated and i think that's the larger concern now while the up government did say that we want to maybe try and look at a symbolic yatra which the supreme court wasn't convinced with they also went on to say with for only those people who really want to go now that's a very vague criteria isn't it uh, 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 ram pratap singh to say for those people who really want to go how will i judge whether your devotion is uh, bigger and stronger and more valuable than my devotion it will be impossible to control the movement as our senior police officer here on the panel said that because these people are spread out across the state they go to different destinations and so they are going to ganga all along and through village roads through country roads so how do you check that who is going to implement we do not have that kind of police force on ground and even if we have it's a matter of sentiment and then again if there are big crowds congregating even the police uh, will not be able to help much and it might lead to a case of a, a civil uh, disorder so why get into such a situation when it can be very well avoided and uh, as supreme court just rightly said i mean right to life is the primary fundamental right and in these extreme circumstances i think we should uh, just follow that and let good wisdom prevail in the state yeah in fact you know you the point that you made i was going to ask mr jain exactly about that because mr jain one is obviously the uh, overall practicality in any for any big event but second is also the fact that this is a uh, religious event uh, you need to be a little show a little bit more empathy you need to show a little bit more sensitivity even when you are dealing with people on ground which makes it an added challenge uh, for for the police department as well or uh, even the local administration how how, how do you then uh, i mean it, it see sounds impossible to reduce the crowd or tell the crowd to act in a certain manner or move in a certain manner no it will not be possible i have said it earlier also it will not be possible for police when there are large congregations on the roads and still there will be still there will be because uh, internally in up only uh, several several congregations will move they go, they go to collect uh, ganga jal they will, they might go to this time to uh, galamukteshwar to collect it uh, or to uh, some other uh, place and then they carry these uh, ganga these ganga jal uh, on the, the uh, thing to uh, ship temples famous ship temples of uh, uttar pradesh so naturally uh, movement will be there but very large scale movement which uh, which goes on in western up and roads are blocked that will that will be that will be stopped because uttarakhand has said that if there is some some kavadiya is seen he will be he will be taken off the road respectfully and he will be dropped at the at the borders or and the trains will be checked before hardwar they will be halted before hardwar and they will be checked and if there are kavadiyas they will be offloaded from the train um, they will be put into quarantine for 14 days so they are they are taking all possible measures and and it, it is sensible to do it Yes, and uh, you know, I fail to understand something that we've done last year as well, where we said, well, um, pandemic is, uh, uh, you know, right now important to tackle the pandemic and people's health. 
last year there was still you know the cases were still under control at this point of time than what it has been now. Last year, we hadn't gone through the kind of trauma that we did in the second wave as well, uh, yes. which has only happened this year. Last year, the virus itself was not as virulent as it is now. The evolved Delta variant of the COVID virus is a lot more dangerous in terms of spreading that, uh, than the original actually was. And there are so many more variants. So now the challenges are added, yet there seems to be an insistence that let, let's just hold this. How will it work, Mr. Raman Malik, to take these tankers, even if we explore this method, which Uttarakhand government has also indicated, that we are preparing, uh, you know, with uh, tankers to carry the Ganga Jal to the border and give it to people. But isn't that big, large-scale crowding and then large-scale movement of people also going to be problematic? See, I do believe that these issues have to be very sensitively handled. It is not a matter of just a television debate to sit down and handle these issues. There were various uh, parts to it. Now, I do agree that there has to be some innovation done. There is no problem in getting some innovation done in this time which is specific because of the pandemic. And we must also look in that how both the things, saving the people from the pandemic, as well as making sure that the religious practices are not broken. We have to find a way. There is, you know, if the attitude is to find a way, a solution, things can get managed. But if some people want to get, uh, you know, piggy bank onto the Supreme Court and start politics over it, then uh, hats off to them and good luck to them. But... Uh, I think the government of Uttar Pradesh would be sensible enough to make certain arrangements which would make sure that lives are saved because that's a paramount thing, as well as their practices are saved. That is also very, very important because both, if you have life, then you have your culture. If you have culture, then it is a lifetime of uh, fulfillment. So. Both have to be managed, and I think the government of Uttar Pradesh would be in a position to execute it in a manner which would keep all the interests. Just also point out, you you're right. Uh, the intent sounds okay, but I, as experts will tell you, from journalists to uh, you know uh, uh, police officials to even the medical experts, that this is not practical on ground. Uh, for some reason, the UP government believes a ban on, on, on the Yatra is not practical, but some kind of a regulation is. Uh, the G Supreme Court wasn't convinced. The Supreme Court has given one more opportunity to the U Uttar Pradesh government to reconsider it. Uh, Mr. Sudhir Mishra is saying that all indications show that they will probably reconsider it. They are cognizant of, you know, what is being said, the sentiment on ground, and of course, the messaging that has now very clearly come from the Supreme Court. And so, uh, before Monday, the uh, UP government will have to take a decision and inform the Supreme Court. Either which ways, it is highly unlikely that the Kavad Yatra will take place in the Avatar. It usually does every single year, this year as well. These are unprecedented times. It would, though, serve well and bode well for the Uttar Pradesh government to take this step themselves. Political gains aside, which they believe will help them, I don't know why political parties still believe that allowing people to hold one simple religious yatra is going to get them vote to be the government for the next five years. If you actually do your job well around the, around the term of five years, then you won't need to look at such alternatives to get your votes going. It would have been great had the UP government done it by now already, but maybe now they will get the message from the Supreme Court. Thank you so much for joining us on this conversation.